He's an absolutely murderous champion. The symbol of a nation. He was portrayed as being a unionist. And a hero in Hollywood. Scotland's greatest icon. From man to myth. He's clearly extraordinary. There's no doubt about that. Discover the three lives of William Wallace. Tomorrow at nine on BBC Two Scotland. This is faith we're dealing with, not history. An ordinary person. An extraordinary death. I've never seen anything like this before. There's a punishment. All the victims are women. So far. Six murders to go. We can't protect them all. There's got to be something. One thing. And we're not seeing it. No one blames you. Ken Stott returns in Messiah. Here we go again. Unstoppable drama. Sunday at 9.30 on BBC One Scotland. Live coverage of the Champions League qualifier, Rangers versus Famagusta. Wednesday, kickoff 7.45 on BBC One Scotland. Graham Norton has the bigger picture with guests including Sonia from EastEnders in 35 minutes. But first, the voice of Scottish comedy. Prize. Up you come now. One shot wins the prize. Come on up. Hi, man. Hi, man. Oh, hey, oh, man. man. Oh, that crossbow. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> top, man. Beautiful. <laughs> He's a gonk, you dopper. <laughs> Here, at Scotland's finest slang school, these young students are learning the unique and beautiful Scottish patois. Meaning? Hear that one. These classes are pure both in there. You want to learn the lingo? You need to watch this. It's a programme called Scunnard. And it's for a band up celebrities flinging funny Scottish words about like ten ball bits at a Bears Den scramble. Three. Yeah, Two, look. Three. Get a swatch of this and you'll always be able to tell your bahookie for your elbow. Bahookie? Bye. What is a bahookie? I think most people know that one. Do you know that one? That's Podger then. Who thought it was a nose? There were ones that I had never heard of before. You see my wallies. And I, I was looking for dogs. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you. Stick a head in you. Hey, come on then, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at yourself. Ogling this hairless box. I like comedy that plays around with words. Is that Zuma still giving you grief on the chat room? Aye, Tube. Just called me a plamfer. Plamf? Tube. When I took my show in New Zealand, not only did I speak in my native tongue, which is Glaswegian, but it was actually signed for the deaf. And that was the funniest experience I'd ever had. Because apparently, in New Zealand, the sign for Glasgow is this. Even in the sign language, we're defined as a fight. Hey! I'm a child of hell, man! They've had me into a guilty! Hey! This boy! I do victimisation, eh? I bet you would be a friend! It's mere the, the language within the accent that can be very funny. Um, the, the old Dundee one about um, we, we the Dundee Pez and asking for an ing and an aw, you know, which I nearly said, right, if I'd have got that in a Dundee accent, it'd have been good. A twa pan peas and an ing and ang and aw, which actually is not a song from the South Pacific. It's two pies and peas and an onion one as well. Take a journey into the unknown with Captain McConnell. Set faces to Malky. It's number one, O'Donnell. That's like he hob I've ever seen a four captain kill. <laughs> captain! What now? They're a wreck big hoory, a spaceship coming to waltz us. And you want to see the fast up size of the thing is I get the other two sizes bigger than your skin. Taysiders in space, in amongst you. You've not lived until you've had a heckler in Fife. It's like being screamed at in binary. A character that I heard on a bus in um, Fife 
who are friends said to her, what is it you're doing now? Because I can't you have changed your job. And her pal says, well, I used to be a nanny, but I'm no a nanny, no, no, eh, no. And I just thought it was absolutely precious. I used to be a nanny, but I'm no a nanny, no, no, eh, no. The thing about accents is, if you're used to your own accent, it's like anything. It's, it's kind of like the smell of your own poo. You don't mind it so much yourself, but you walk in the toilet after someone else, my God. Crivings, Ma, I didn't he ken things were this bad. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, would you? Hey, King's Cribbins, look at you, sitting there with your, with your people's friend and your bag of granny sugars and your, your 1940s homespun philosophy. You give me the dry bulk, so you do. I can sometimes laugh when uh, a Pfeiffer opens his gob. Dearie, dearie me. We'd get the annuals, and, but we'd never get to keep them because my dad would send them to my cousins in India. I would love if my cousins in India were saying Jings Cribbins and help my bobo. Soapy suitor, what a label, he's as bad as our table. Imagine how funny that would be. Imagine it caught off in the Punjab, you know? Govern government ministers were saying, help my bob. How fantastic would that be? I brought a letter for the posty, ma. Oh, oh, it's for the twin school. Oh, what have they been up to this time? Have they been putting tax on the teacher's chair, eh? It says they've been expelled for underage drinking. <laughs> I tell them not to hang about with on Ur Willie. They can find he likes a good bucket. <laughs> Scunner. Fusty. Us. We both. Peely Wally. The good thing about the Scottish language is it can be bent, manipulated into making sounds that are genuinely absolutely funny. Hey, where's the nutter? <laughs> husband officer. He's out there on the ledge. How am I supposed to talk him down off the ledge and back into the house? Well, for a start, you can go out there onto the ledge with him and try to win his confidence. Who's <laughs> there on the ledge? What's wrong? Have you got vertigo? No, just up the road there. <laughs> We went to Regina, that, that's right in the heart of Saskatchewan, the wheat belt, 400 miles of wheat, and there were miles from anywhere. Now I went into the hotel, it was very late at night, and I picked the phone up, and the wee girl at the other end of the phone was Scottish. You know you get that sort of smell of the accent when she says, Yes! <laughs> what do you want? I said, I'd like to be called in the morning. She said, well, sleep with your windows open. <laughs> You have that whole droll thing in Scottish humour that you, you didn't used to have in English humour. I think the deadpan thing in England came from people at like Chick Murray and stuff like that. I did a show at the festival one time and there was this old guy of about 90 uh, and he was with these old English ladies and I did uh, a joke that was about a, a painting and uh, I was using the phrase tableau, right? And I was talking about this tableau and one of the old women was like turned to this guy and going, what's a tableau? And he went, it's kind of fudge the makeup here with a lot of sugar in it. Oh, it's a ball! Break! Break! Oh, let's come down for real, let's go! Oh, not for me, oh. Oh, things. Help my boob. Help us, bro. See you. Mm. I'm sick of you, you premature ejaculation. I did write the premature ejaculation sketch, for which I now humbly apologise. There is only the biggest load of rancid cheek you've ever clapped your people's on in your pocket. Hey! I mean, the offence, the offence, you know. I mean, I I don't mean to drag crap into your living rooms or nothing. But I mean, that breaks new frontiers and garbage, does it? No, oh, hey. And the best is, the best is, some bamstick, some bamstick went out and bought that as well. Some walking suit up the BBC with an alpine tan and 40 grand a year thought, oh, do you know? That is magic. Oh, hey. Oh, and the scum will lap that up. He's a hundred weight of that, Bruce. Well, if you're looking in, pal, I'm here to tell you, I'm scum. And I don't like it one bloody well bit. <laughs> you know, there were words that I had never heard of before, but, you know, when used in, in that particular monologue or that particular speech or from that particular, uh, you know, episode, it would work, you know, really well. The frightening thing was, you know, Three months later, you heard somebody say it in the street, and it's become part of the language. And you think, 
Ooh. Give it ecstasy once, and the next thing you know, it'll be all oh, air rab. Let us fondle your summit. How was it for you? I just tell her, say, I say, listen, lady, I have no idea at all how it was for me because I always, I always make a point of going to sleep before we finish. A lot of the time in Rhapsody Nesbitt, I didn't understand what all the words meant because if I had done, I probably would have uh, taken them out because they were so filthy. Podger? What's podger, then? I love the word podger. It does actually physically explain the action in a strange, bizarre, psychosexual way. <laughs> and it actually might even be the same noise. Is it, uh, to shag? Look, there's Mary. I wonder if she's missing a podger yet. <laughs> hey, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I physically speak. Right, I'm just saying, man, she's maybe a bit vulnerable, like, you know, a wee bit insecure, you know. You all right there, Mary Hen? Aye. I was just saying to the boys here that you must be feeling like a wee bit miserable, you know, where I've been, a wee bit insecure, like. Aye, I'll tell you something else. What's that? I'm no half missing a podger. <laughs> Wins. Ball bag. Scunner. And glower. Glake it. We're struggling here, you know. This is going out to England. There's a language barrier. Oh, never, never, never. Damn a bet. <laughs> the folk in England are near, half feel gapes. <laughs> or glicked gummerals. But this, this song we're doing, it's all about Aberdeen and roundabout. I mean, this may surprise you, but there's a lot of folk in London have never heard a balloter. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking ballot out have never heard of London. <laughs> Took me a while to get into Scotland or what. At the start, you, you, you to train your ear to it. It's a bit in the same way when, probably when I read the first Irvin Welsh book, uh, first few chapters, it, it was quite slow and heavy going. And then when you get into the, the language, into the dialect, then it raced along. We are now landing in Glasgow, where passengers are reminded to set their watches back 25 years. <laughs> a lot of fair mitten. <laughs> Would you scare for a gyratory convolution or or burrow in the hall? Huh? <laughs> Are you dancing? You asking? I'm asking. Dance. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you you dance like such Charisse? No. I'm no surprise. <laughs> I loved when Francie and Josie did the whole, are you dancing? Are you asking? I'm asking. I'm dancing. And it was just the way they used their, their voices. I thought um, uh, Jack Mulroy in particular sounded really, really camp. I loved that. <laughs> well, what's that? That's a hitchhiker. Oh. That. Trousers coming down. <laughs> Have you not got a lumber? No. Where do you stay? East Kilbride. <laughs> East Kilbride? Mm. It's not a lumber you want, it's a pen pal. <laughs> lumber conjures up images of a big man, like a lumberjack in a check shirt, who's maybe cut down trees in Canada. Turns out a lumber is the man three doors down who's a wee skinny tiny man who was the probably capable of a winch or a podger. But it was usually something the people who were older than me, older than my brothers would say, I've got a lumber. So I'd, I'd not heard it used for years, but it's a nice word, lumber. I thought a bahookie was your nose or something. Who thought it was a nose? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been out of touch with the bahookiness. A bahookie? is a huge ass. <laughs> oh, now, these are rather nasty, you know, aren't they? Yes, those are made for a lure. For a what? Oh, for a lure, I see what you mean, yes. One of the easiest characters for me to do on stage and on television was this Kelvin side woman. They look like the kind of women who wear... They've got a scarf for every day of the week. Every, every A became shortened, you see. Oh, that, that'll be very, very nice. Oh, yes, they're really nice. <laughs> Don't you think? Oh! Oh, may I, is that? 
Is that bustle effect meant to be there? Oh, it's really rather unusual, isn't it? It's sort of the bohooky looky. <laughs> that sketch is very much of its time, but having said that, women like that definitely still exist, and they all work in estate agents. <laughs> Parliamo, Glasgow. It's a door. Oh, God, sitting there in your simmet. It'll be hell on a fella. Is he off his work? He's took the night off. Oh, hell, as fella. Lumbers are him with a number, Ella. <laughs> Why the hell should hell as fella no lumber, Ella, with a number, Ella? <laughs> Let us examine now some of the more difficult words and phrases that we've used in the residence of the young man's lady friend, or bird. Is he off his work? Note the word, is he off his? <laughs> we use this as a prefix when asking a question. If we are concerned about a person's lack of appetite, we inquire, is he off his meat? <laughs> and if we find that someone's behavioural pattern is tending towards the unorthodox, we might say, is he off his bloody chump? <laughs> Um, but the other one is about well, Zat Noah, Z E T N O A, Zat Noah Noffy Nuisance. I just thought that was brilliant. The, the inspiration for Parliama Glasgow came from a character called the Professor, and I dreamt that up for a radio show for, for Radio Scotland. My semantic and anthropological studies <laughs> last week took me to a city redolent with Celtic mysticism. I got the Soon idea that it would be great fun arrival, if a, a rather kind of a erudite professor came up from the south and looked at Glasgow characters and the Glasgow accent and everything else anthropologically, as if there were creatures that he had found in Western Samoa or something. Here, Hootie. Here, Hootie. Here, Hootie, look for apples. <laughs> Alec Mitchell, who wrote them, was wonderful about coming up with ideas. He had the professor be astonished that some of the people in Glasgow had, must have been of Chinese origin. He said, my interlocutor pointed a little man out and said, he is half foo. Suddenly, from the font, there came a clattering sound, followed by another and louder clattering sound. <laughs> All at once, a matron broke the sacred spell with the poignant call, Oro! 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 Muggs Wallace has fell up with a fork! Delightful. Thank you much. I do know what Wallies are. Um, I have some myself. Um, they're false teeth. You also get Wally Dugs, which are China dogs, and you get Wally Closes, which are closes uh, tiled with porcelain type tiles. So my sister-in-law um, had been to the orthodontist and she had um, a set made of her teeth and said, have you seen my wallies? And I, I was looking for dogs. Mia Faris, Coke Claris, Barrowera Mara. At first I said, now will this only go down in Glasgow? The Edinburgh people loved it as much. I mean, Glasgow folk were laughing at themselves and the Edinburghers were laughing at Glaswegians, but it went very, very well in, in, in both cities. We would like to draw your attention to another charming word in our language. It was used when the young man noticed that a tomato had fallen from the fruit barrow. A tamara tamotutra para. The important word here is tamotutra. <laughs> fallen out of. A word new in our vocabulary stems from the permissive society. Referring to a lady and gentleman meeting for the first time, we make use of the word tumultinti. To this we add the Latin word raperorum, and so we make the interesting phrase raperorum tumultinti bed. I remember that phrase being used, you know. Your dad's drunk, he tumbled into bed. I dipped his pockets. When I went to Aberdeen, I would do a Parliama Glasgow there, wondering how it would go. They loved it. And then I realised that, that Glaswegian Pater is really the lingua franca of, of, of Scottish comedy. Let's get you back to your ballot, man. Okay. Probably I'm all Glasgow, eh? Easy! Ha! Easy! Yeah, Stanley Bates has got a lot to answer for. Come on, <laughs> get your feet funky, move! Yeah. When I listen to Stanley Baxter's um, very well performed, don't get me wrong, but when I listen to his version of what Glasgow was then, it doesn't ring true to me now. 
I'm much more fascinated with the way that Ned speak now. And to me, it is, it's slightly different from that. <laughs> Steve, oh, my man. What's the hand in, Rora? Same old shite, Charlie man, doing that bookies, man. Ball head away for a big Yankee. That's me portless <laughs> nudie. And done for me, right? <laughs> okay, guess I am, my man. Here, he didn't for a fair holidays. Due to a lack of cabins, it'll be Hamel. Hamel, man. Hey, well, <laughs> hey, well, I was doing a sketch in Chewing the Fat, where it was the, the banter boys were, uh, you know, in delight at uh, these two Neds talking in the lift about their holidays, and they were saying, Hamel Damey, and I said to Ford, what's a Hamel Damey? And he said, you know, this, he thought, was very funny, because this was a stupid Englishman who uh, didn't understand that that meant, home will do me. Scalped. Dreepy. Sleek it. Nyaf. Gallus. Normally, really good catchphrases kind of develop organically um, from the context that they're in. So you get Rapsy Nesbitt saying, I'll tell you, boy, I will tell you this. Uh, Elaine C. Smith saying, You're dead brilliant, eh? <laughs> Just caught the imagination, as did uh, Goni no Day that. I'll hold my hand up and say that the Goni no day that um, I didn't really get the joke, I have to say, um, before we did them. It was only once I'd seen Ford and Greg doing it that I thought, all oh, right, I see what they're getting at. <laughs> Goni no day that. Oh, just Goni no. Broadcasting Corporation calling civilization. More nonsense in a minute, but first it's time for. I've never heard the word Gallic and humour in the same sentence. Hello, hello, hello. Who's that calling? Come on now, out with it. It's Sadie Morrison. Sadie Morrison. Well, 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 well. And where are you from, Sadie? From Glasgow. From Glasgow. Mess well me, the continent, eh? <laughs> it's a subject I know nothing about, is, is, uh, is Gallic humour. Which is pretty rich, considering, you know, one of the characters we used to do in a naked video was, was, you know... On with the quiz. Now, your first question. On average, how many eggs can a hen lay in a week? Is it A, 7? Is it B, 46? Or C, 97? Um, um, well... Come on now, Sadie, out with it. <laughs> Seven. Oh, come here for God's sake, woman. <laughs> James Cribbins, help my bub. What kind of hens have you got in Glasgow at all? There was only one Gallic word, and that was the signing off. That's all for now. Thank you, Bath. Please, I hope I don't get letters because of this. But as far as I know, it's a genuine word. If you were actually living in the islands or something like that, the only thing that would have been directed at you in the whole course of the last 20 years would be that sketch they used to do a naked video that was like the, the Outer Hebrides Broadcasting Company or something. They should have just run a big flag up the top of BBC Scotland saying, we think you are fannies. Voila! 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 Ooh, can all go. Voila, voila, I can all go. Sandcastle! feedback that we've had from the Gallic community on um, sketches that we've done like the socks has not been particularly positive because there is a feeling that there is a sort of slightly racist west of Scotland um, agenda um, trying to sort of take the piss out of Gales but really and truly you know in all of these shows we've taken the rise out of nearly everybody else so why not include the Gales as well I'm sure the Gallic people are overjoyed at the the prominence that the the sock puppet characters are are bringing to the Gaelic language. Volatile, splashy, bobba bobba, oosty bobba. Volatile, package. I think they're very funny, you know, because it, it's giving a language also an airing kind of in in a different way, you know. It's still kind of recognised, but not mocked at in in a bad way. You know, they're obsessed with soft drugs, and that, that in itself is surreal because we don't know anybody in the Gaelic speaking community who smokes marijuana at all, do we, Davy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I would say Gaelic humour is Scottish humour plus ferry. My God, the ferry. The number of times the ferry is mentioned. Oh, it makes me want to live there. I want to be. I, I want that. I want there to be such a big ph phenomenon in my life that it just takes over like that. What the uh, spoof Neds have sprayed on the wall is uh, means freedom for Gaelic. That is a political statement because Gaelic, having been primarily an oral language, is in the process of being turned into a modern language with a with a hard and fast set of rules. What we are showing is that there's a a sense of freedom that is getting lost. The Neds in Randan, the few times that they popped up, are not really any any sort of serious attempt at, at uh, payback for what chewing the fat has done to the Gaelic language, you know. <laughs> oh, what's happening? Here, drink that, Pet. Oh. Mm. What was that? I swallowed. Two aspirins, Pet. But I haven't got a headache. How are you, beautiful? Now, forceps. Will you give me the bloody forceps, woman? <laughs> Nas Baxter comes from Glasgow. Tom's your back. <laughs> a lot of uh, gangs in the East End of Glasgow were na had Chinese names, so there was Tong Jabas and Toy Jabas. Uh, and I never knew where Tong Jabas had come from, so that was actually quite a revelation. Crabbit. Fished. Diddy. Jawbox. Edgy. <laughs> to keep edgy means to keep a lookout. Um, again, it fascinated me because I don't know how do you get from edgy, meaning nervous, to edgy, meaning keep a lookout. I'd written a sketch Whoa. called Sports Socks. Mr. Gallagher, I love the guy uh, yes. in Argyle Street in Glasgow that sold sports yeah. socks out of a crate. So you wanted to discuss a business loan? Yes. The bank manager's asking the guy, what's your uh, marketing strategy? And he says, sports socks, yeah, your sports socks, two for a pound, da. Two for a pound, da. <clears throat> sports socks. They are your sports socks. <laughs> two for a pound, da. Two for a pound, da. They are your sports socks. You have a premises in mind? Yes, uh, Argyle Street in Glasgow. Uh, Glasgow. Right, so is it a freehold or a stall within a complex? <laughs> no, no, it's Argyle Street itself, mate, you know. A couple of crates outside the Marks and Spencers. Will you not get trouble off the council or the police? No, no, no. You see, with my business partner, Davy, you know, keeping the edgy, I can pretty much scarf under the coach, you know, if you get cloaked. That gave me so much joy to write the word edgy in a sketch. It's, it's a word that I've... I hold quite dear to my heart. It's a word that I grew up with. Sturi's a great word. Sturi Maduri is a beautiful rhyming couplet. Maduri is a popular uh, liqueur based on the fruit, the, the melon, and is quite popular among uh, adolescent uh, girls in Glasgow. Big Palios is coming, don't he? Sort these wee bastards out. <laughs> Why? Oh, Big fella by the name of Innes. Him and his wife used to live on the scheme. I tell you, there was no carry on when he was a boot. You didn't cross Big Innes. I'm going to get him for the railway station later on, eh? Ah, uh, that'd be great, eh? Like a cowboy, a sheriff, coming down to round up all the wee pricks. <laughs> a hard nut. Aye. So, eh, uh, have you any Maduri? A puffy hard nut. No, you see, the thing is, Innes loves Maduri, but he can't drink it because he's, he's allergic to it, you know, so we can't have any about. This is a great day. For years and years, I've only ever had the one bottle, and it sits there, laughing at me. And now, I finally get to shift it. Oh, that's great. I'm going to stick it under my bed, aye. Gentlemen, I give you the Sturi Maduri. <laughs> I owned a pub, and trust me, the Maduri did stay Sturi. Nobody drank it. My love has, has got a, a nose. <laughs> uh, my love has got a red, red nose. Uh, from coming through the rye. Uh, a, man's, a man's a man for all I'm saying. Uh, oh, Doctor, me. thank heavens yeah. you've come. He's been like this for hours. Uh, the best laid schemes are rice and hens, gang after gangly. Uh, it's your right to call me Mrs McAllister. Oh, it's not. It's I'm not. I'm afraid so. Oh, gonna cuddy meet a fuddy. <laughs> 
Your husband's suffering from terrible burns. Oh! Come on, Steve, I'm evil! Go and use that to me, and you what you're laughing at! I had customers who walked around and went, that Guinness and Latin and whiskey. I knew what they meant. Although other members of staff are like, that's fantastic that you hold the power of magic language. <laughs> I love the, the Robbie Coltrane thing he used to do on a kick up the 80s. That was like just him sort of being this mad Glaswegian just kind of ranting and interrupting himself and stuff. And that was like a national show. And he was like just really confidently doing a kind of Scottish character, which you'd never see now. Lewis Collins! The sketch where Robbie Coltrane actually uh, loses it and he's kind of uh, shouting abuse at Rod Stewart and the long forgotten Paul Squire, um, I think is a particularly interesting piece of comedy. Dodge Chip! What? Rod Stewart! <laughs> <laughs> He genuinely got annoyed by a man who told him that he couldn't film where we were originally doing the sketch, uh, which wound him up so much that he's actually giving you a piece of genuine visceral rage in that thing. It's not acting, that's actually real. Uh, and because of that, I just think it's, it's brilliant every time I see it. There's no filming here, right? It's... <laughs> when Robbie Coltrane was going, I, 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 I mean, it's terrible as you, man, it's really bad, man. I just thought that was absolutely hysterical. And even if you were from Orkney or even from England and you heard that, you'd still think the character was funny because you know it's about somebody who speaks in such a way that you don't even understand what they're saying at all. <laughs> Scotland's basically defined by low self-esteem and high cholesterol. Um, so there's uh, lots and lots of words for idiot. So it's like the Eskimos have a hundred words for snow, and we've got a hundred words for ball bag. Tube's a word I've grown up with. And tube's a word I still don't know. I think the reason I love it so much is I don't know where it comes from. What's so insulting about being a length of cylinder? Is that Zuma still giving you grief on the chat room? Aye, tube. Just called me a plamfer. Plamf? Tube. Plamf. Tube. I, I'm going to tell him he's a ball bag. <laughs> Not here. Tell him he's a waste of a ball bag. <laughs> Did you? Dear Prune, you are a waste of a ball bag, you plamf. <laughs> Send. <gasps> Oh, heavens, Jean, we appear to be the recipients of a pure slagging. Oh, the virtual Glesky banter. <laughs> My favourite story this week, obviously, the Celtic fans whose plane got diverted to Cardiff. The police were called, the military were called, two fighter planes were scrambled. And what I love about it is when they asked the Celtic fans what had happened, they said, it was a bit of banter. <laughs> banter gone wrong. They've caused an international incident and their line of defence is Take a joke! <laughs> Galoot Egypt Smith Stur Numpty Swatch There's something quite naughty about swatch You know, or surreptitious I was swatch at that I mean, what is all that about? I mean, Fleurs, what did they do? Tell me, what did they do? They just stand there Waving their sort of boots, stinking the place out. And the best it is, the punters is swarming in, man. Swarming in. Millions of punters swarming in. Just to get a swatch of the smelly bastard doing it. <laughs> hey, that's five of the heat all. It's not the way to get a swatch of the ribbons. You need ribbons a day now. The ribbons will not be around to Tuesday, sweetheart. <laughs> Is that you? Ah, that's us. <laughs> I'm a fan of the, the sketch, Giza Swatch, your fanny. I'm not actually a fan of the doing it, I have to say. Is that the, would that be the correct English? I think I've had a wee look before. Oh, no, I'm not going there. Let's not go there. There you are. That's a 99. And a bottle of iron brew. What's your wee pal wanting? <laughs> He's wanting a squatch, you're funny. 
I laugh when I think about that because obviously it was it was so successful and, and to this day p people still shout geezer a swatch your fanny and and it's lovely. <laughs> Sliding, balancing, gliding.